If you're watching this video, the e-hemorrhoids known as the launchers are probably standing in your way of dark matter. And the current glitch for the science camos aren't helping, so hopefully by the time this is up, it's been fixed. In this video, we're going to be going over the best methods I've learned for getting the launchers gold. We'll be covering what I believe to be the best strats for each camo challenge on both the RPG and the Ligma. If you're looking for specific tips, timestamps will be linked in the description below. I'll be splitting the two launchers up for some of this video. Although they have almost identical challenges, they are polar opposites in how they function gameplay-wise. Also, all the information for this video comes from my experience getting the launchers dark matter and my camo deep dives where I revisit the challenges after completing them and search for easier methods and also from community feedback from you guys and just so I'm not repeating myself really quick I'm going to broadly go over the base launcher loadout that you'll be able to tweak depending on the challenge and launcher you're working on First things first, toss the wet sock launcher of your choice into your class. And as for the primary, it doesn't matter too much. But if you want to get these camos over with fast, I recommend focusing on slowly using the launcher. Starting with the wild card, my go-to for grinding these was Danger Close. Danger Close gives you two lethals and tacticals as well as spawning you with an extra rocket. Perk Greed is also a solid option. This helps you put together solid perk combos to make life a little easier. Maybe the most efficient wild card for scratching your masochist itch is Lawbreaker. This lets you have both the launchers in the same class. However, I don't recommend this because they take from the same ammo pool, but it is known as the best strat for the any percent mental derangement speed run. Now on to perks. For the first perk slot, if you're using a Danger Close build, the best options are Engineer, which outlines all score streaks and equipment in red, and Flak Jacket to keep you alive longer from explosives, both yours and your opponents. Pick up both if you go with the perk greed build. For the second perk slot, you want to use Scavenger. This lets you replenish rockets from the fanny packs of the Fallen. Or you can use Quartermaster to recharge your equipment every 25 seconds. Or even Gearhead to reduce the recharge time on your field upgrades. With a perk greed build, I recommend Scavenger and Quartermaster. For the third perk slot, it's mostly down to preference, but I'll run through the main ones really quick. Gung Ho is good for playing fast. You'll be able to shoot and reload while sprinting and you'll be able to switch weapons a lot faster. Ghost will keep you off the radar and Cold Blooded will save you from AI controlled kill streaks. And Ninja will make your footsteps a lot quieter. And for your field upgrade, for sure the best choice for any launcher situation is the Assault Pack. This will help you replenish your rockets for when you run out. For lethals and tacticals, you can choose just about anything. Stuns and flashes can help you get information and make it easier to get kills. Stims can help keep you alive when going for kill streak challenges. Smokes are helpful if you want to stay in them and beat some faces in. Yes, melee kills count and we'll get into that more later on. For your lethal, Semtex helps a ton. This can help you counter people using the Antichrist perk known as Flak Jacket. Just throw it to weaken them, then follow it up with a rocket. The same thing can be said about all other explosive lethals, but I think Semtex works the best. And the Tomahawks are a sick oh shit option when you bite off more than you can chew and need to get a quick kill to stay alive. And for game modes, the main ones you want to use are Nuketown 24-7, Normal Domination, Fireteam Dirty Bomb, and Combined Arms Assault. But the game modes you use can vary a lot and are also dependent on preference. Core is great for staying alive longer and giving you more time to shoot down score streaks. Hardcore is good for kills, but Flak Jacket, even though it's been nerfed slightly, still exists in Hardcore and can lead to even more frustration due to how easy you can die. Nuketown might be the best overall map for these weapons, but it can get a little crazy sometimes. Definitely the best for kills. Other maps like Checkmate are also good for kill challenges if you camp in the middle of the plane. They also have ammo resupply bins if you run out of rockets. Combined Arms Domination is the best for score streaks slash vehicle challenges as long as you avoid maps like Cartel and Miami. Players will mainly use vehicles at the start of games and if you make it to overtime. The rest of the game you can just shoot down score streaks that come in. Using these in Warzone count towards challenges as well. And heading into plunder with these is kinda extra, but if you need to level these up, completing recon contracts with the weapon out will speed up the leveling process. And since these challenges count in Warzone, make sure you put a munition box on your class so you can replenish your rockets. Now let's go over the challenges that are similar between the two launchers. For the spray camo, you need to get 50 eliminations. The Sigma is an insanely slow and overwhelmingly weak launcher. And the RPG is so much quicker to shoot, so you can kind of play fast and loose with this one. They have roughly the same damage output, but the only difference is the speed. To get these kills easier, you gotta build your class around doing so. My loadouts for this challenge would be Danger Close Wildcard, Flak Jacket, Scavenger, and Gung Ho, with Smokes and a Semtex. For a perk greed build, it's basically the same, but add Engineer, Quartermaster, and Ninja. And of course, for all those, use an Assault Pack. The best strats i found for getting kills with these sacks of garbage are as follows. First, hop into Hardcore Nuketown for the easiest kill. If you don't like hardcore, core should work fine, but it'll take longer. Try to aim for direct impacts. There's little to no splash damage on launchers in this game, so direct impacting is your best bet for getting kills. ADS speed is very slow for the Sigma, so pre-aiming and jump peeking makes life easier. 
here. Tossing a Semtex to lower the health and effectiveness of Flak Jacket, then shooting a rocket at the opponent is the best way to counter this fucking nuisance. The good old 1-2 is solid and reliable. Launch a rocket at them, then clean them up with a quick bop. But the funniest and arguably easiest method is to throw down a smoke and chill in it. Wait for people to blindly run through or buy and give them a nice little how you doing. In hardcore, this is a one-shot kill. And core, it's two shot. But it's definitely faster and more deadly than actually using rockets. Also, I'm not sure if finishing moves count, so keep that in mind when using this method. And if you can't sit still, try flanking opponents and use the element of surprise against them. Just cycle through these methods and you'll have this challenge done in no time. Difficulty? Boxing scarce. For the classic camo, you need to kill two enemies without dying 20 times in multiplayer. This challenge was nerfed a little since I last did it, bringing it down from three kills without dying 25 times. Soft flex. Anyways, this challenge will test your patience and break your balls, or lady balls, in any way that you can think of. We're gonna borrow a bit from the spray camo section, but with self preservation in mind. My loadouts for this challenge would be the Danger Close Wildcard, Flak Jacket, Scavenger, and Gung Ho. For Perk Greed, add Engineer, Quartermaster, and Ninja. The tactical you choose is based on what method you go with, but I think the Semtex should stay on as your lethal to counter Flak Jacket. Nuketown 24-7 is one of the best game modes for this, but domination on crossroads and checkmate also work well. As for core or hardcore, in core you can definitely survive longer, but kills are harder to get. Kills are way easier in hardcore, but it's a lot harder to stay alive, so pick your poison. Smokes are great for the melee method if you can knock in a couple skulls before kicking the bucket. Stuns can keep people still and help keep groups together for easier chance at multi-kills. They also work great to get information. Just toss them in a room or area, and if someone is there, you'll get a pop-up saying that you stunned them. Flashes kind of work the same as stuns, but aren't as effective. Once you get a kill, all you gotta do is fall back to reload, then rinse and repeat until you get the challenge done. Also remember, pre-aiming and jump peeking common spots work well to counter the slow ADS speed of the signal. The best spots to get this challenge done are as follows. Top of the stairs in Nuketown. Either house works, just take out people as they walk in. Both windows work as well, just fire to the street below. The middle of the plane on Checkmate worked well for me, but I used this before Nuketown was added. Same with this bridge on Crossroads, but if you know any better spots, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Difficulty? Cheeks. For the psychedelic camo, you need to get 25 double kills. This challenge is a bitch, not only to do, but you have to level it all the way up to unlock it. To know for sure you're getting a double kill, both kills need to appear in the kill feed. They don't need to be next to each other, just appear at the same time. We all know how difficult it is to get kills with these dingleberry shooters, but this class setup is similar as the other kill based challenges. With a danger close wild card, use flak jacket, scavenger, and gung ho. For perk greed, add engineer, quartermaster, and ninja. The tactical you choose is based on what method you go with, but Semtex stays on for your lethal to counter flak jacket. And just like the other kill challenges hardcore nuketown 24 7 is the best way to get this done and since i've already gone over the methods for getting kills easier i'm just gonna fly through these aim for direct impact splash damage is basically zero pre-aim and jump peak to counter the sigma slow ads use semtex so we can flak jacket opponent the one two is very effective just rocket then melee melee kills count and are often faster than using rockets flanking is effective playing around objectives common angles or choke points or finding a nice spot to sit at gives you a better chance of getting double kills if multiple enemies are in a vehicle you take out it'll count towards this challenge a lot of this comes down to positioning and luck, but if you put yourself near these high traffic areas and you're persistent, you'll get this challenge done. Stay strong. Difficulty? Amari. For the stripes camo, you need to destroy 50 equipment, score streaks, or vehicles in multiplayer. For the Ligma, this is cake. You can get this done pretty easily because of its lock-on feature. With the RBG, it'll take a little longer because of how difficult it is to shoot down aerial streaks, but this challenge itself isn't too bad. For the class with Danger Close, Engineer is a must, Scavenger is self-explanatory, and Cold-Blooded will allow you to take on AI-controlled streaks without the threat of dying. With Perk Greed, just add Flak Jacket, Quartermaster, and for the third perk, you can just add in whatever. But really quick in order, here are the most helpful perks in the third slot for this challenge ghost gung-ho and ninja for this challenge it's definitely better to do this in core nuketown works fine and combined arms often has a lot of score streaks coming in but you can also get this done while working on other challenges just pay attention to when score streaks come in an easy way to stay on top of this is to go into settings interface and turn subtitles to on this just adds a little bit more of a heads up when streaks are coming in there aren't too many methods for getting this done it's pretty straightforward but for the sigma spy planes are the easiest to take down they come in often and only take one rocket counter spy planes take two care package helis take one for the RPG, sentry turrets and RCXDs are the easiest to take down, but aren't seen as frequently as other score streaks. All field upgrades count for this as well. All drivable vehicles in Dirty Bomb, Combined Arms, and Warzone also count for this challenge, so long as someone from the opposing team is using them. Difficulty? Easy. For the geometric camo, you need to destroy 50 ground-based score streaks or vehicles in multiplayer. This one is also pretty straightforward. We're going to be using the same build as we did for Stripes. For the class with Danger Close, Engineer, Scavenger, and Cold-Blooded. With Perk Reed, just add Flak Jacket, Quartermaster, 
and for the third perk, add whatever but in order. Use Ghost, Gung Ho, and Ninja. Also, the subtitle method is useful for all streak-based challenges. Just go to Settings, Interface, and turn subtitles to on to see when ground streaks go down. Ground streaks are very uncommon. The main ones you'll see are Sentry Turrets and RCXDs. Since these are more rare to find in Nuketown 24-7, head on over to Combined Arms if you're hurting on this challenge. It's very important that you avoid the maps Cartel and Miami if you don't already avoid them. They have little or no vehicles and you'll be wasting your time. But in Combined Arms, usually at the start of the game, there are vehicles that both teams have in their spawns that they can use to get around the map quicker. What you need to do is hop in one and drive to the main choke point and be ready to shoot some people down. This works even better if you have someone driving for you. But what I found from playing is after the start of the game, people don't use vehicles nearly as much. So I'd suggest working on another gun or challenge while waiting for more people on vehicles to come around. But do not, I repeat, do not leave the game. It may be tempting to hop into multiple combined arm games just to farm kills at the start, but these challenges will not count if you leave. So it's best just to tough it out and stay in the game. Water camping on Armada works well. Just head over to land and resupply rockets and you'll be golden. And on crossroads, sitting over on the mountain where everyone is sniping works great for giving you a good view of the map and a decent chance to take vehicles out. Difficulty? Annoying. I think I've covered just about all the overlap for these launchers. And for this section of the video, we're going to be covering score streak based challenges. We're going to use the same loadout for all these streak based challenges, so I'll go over it really fast. For a danger close build, engineer, scavenger, and cold blooded. With perk read, just add flak jacket, quartermaster, and for the third perk, like I've said before, just take your pick, but in order, the most helpful perks are ghost, gung ho, and ninja. Also, like previously mentioned, the subtitle method is helpful for all streak based challenges. Just go to settings, interface, and turn subtitles to on to see when these streaks come in. All right, now that all that's said and done, let's get into the Sigma 2. For the Flora Camo, you need to destroy 50 aerial score streaks. This is probably the easiest challenge for the Ligma. Basically, any mode that has score streaks works for this. You can get it done by shooting down spy planes and other air streaks as they come in on Nuketown, or knock this out in combined arms with ease. This challenge can be all but ignored for the most part. Air streaks come more than Johnny Sin, so you'll end up getting this challenge done without realizing. Difficulty? Spec Ops. For the Science Camo, you need to destroy three score streaks or enemy vehicles in a single game 10 times. With the Sagma, this can be done super easy. This challenge, like all other challenges, stacks progress if you complete it multiple times in a game. This can be done in almost any mode, but by far the best way to complete it is to hop into combined arms and take out any and everything that pops up. Most of the time, you can take out plus or minus 12 score streaks in a game, and that's on the lower end if you're actively looking for streaks. If you haven't completed any of the other score streaks challenges for the Sigma, this should help knock them out. Difficulty? Not too bad. Now without further ado, let's look at the RPG-7. For the Flora Camo, you can destroy 25 aerial score streaks. This is the challenge that will have you ordering some Preparation H with Prime Shipping. The accuracy of the RPG on anything more than a few feet away is awful. You can crouch to make the accuracy better, but it doesn't help too much. There's a method I've seen going around for an easier way to shoot down spy planes. Basically, you need to make an Isosceles, Socrates, suck on these, triangle, yada yada yada, whatever. I could never find success with this method. The angles didn't seem to work, but if you want to try to eyeball it, try to line it up with the bottom plate of the iron sight with the lowest point of the spy plane, and try to aim about three spy plane lengths ahead of it and pray that it hits. I personally have only shot down one spy plane ever with the RPG, so it's best just to hop into some Nuketown 20 24 7 and stay on the lookout for care packages, specifically the helicopter that drops them off. This is the easiest aerial source streak to shoot down with the RPG. Just wait for it to hold in place as it's about to drop the package to take it out. Attack helicopters also are within the realm of possibility to shoot down, but they move a little erratically, so make your shot count. The method I found that works the best for this is in the pregame lobby, simply say, Hey, can you guys run care packages? I'm trying to get my RPG challenges done. Uh, sure. Uh, Thanks, guys. Anything for the moment. I was surprised by the amount of people that actually followed through with putting them on. If you can convince somebody on the other team to help you out, you should be able to get at least three in a game, if not more. This method can work for almost all challenges, but it'll help if you sweeten the deal by offering to help them with any challenges they may need in return. Or you might just get chewed out. Another way to get aerial streaks if you're down bad is to hop into Dirty Bomb and back out of any game that isn't on the map Ruka. On this map, you actually spawn above where the spy planes spawn. But this method only works if you spawn right as the spy plane comes in or you're literally the only person working on launchers in the lobby otherwise you'll just be wasting your time difficulty wet asshole for the science camo you need to destroy three score streaks or enemy vehicles in a single game 10 times i'm gonna be real if the methods for the four camo section aren't helping you or you can't find any good samaritans to toss out some care packages you can try to tough it out in some nuketown but this can get inconsistent and frustrating another method for this and the way i got mine done was to hop into combined arms armada and camp in the water all you gotta do is wait for boats to come by and take them out same thing goes for 
for Dirty Bomb, but you'll be able to find a few ground streaks here to take out as well. Difficulty? Fuck. That's all the tips I have for getting the launcher's gold. If this helped you or you learned something new, leave a like. If not, dislike. If you're new here and you like the content, consider subscribing. We're on the road to 100k. And if you want to see me struggle with the launchers, those videos will be linked in the description below. If you want to see me make a guide on another weapon class, leave your suggestions in the comments. And while you're there, drop a ligma to let me know that you made it all the way to the end of the video. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.